The Switch app provides detailed information about the device to which the tester is connected. The values displayed are based on CDP, LLDP, or EDP. Not all switches fully populate all the values. If the values you're looking for are not displayed on this screen, you may need to check the switch configuration. The information is collected by running an auto test within the auto test app. In order for the POE information to be displayed, the POE test must be included in the auto test. If there are multiple auto test profiles in the auto test group, the last auto test in the list will be used by the Switch app. Let's look at the information that is displayed on the Switch app screen. The first thing we see at the top of the screen is the auto test profile that was used to collect this information. Tapping on this profile will take you to the profile within the auto test. This is a quick way to switch over to auto test to get more details or change the profile configuration. Next, we see the name of the switch. In this case, we are connected to Studio Switch 3. Below is the model of the switch. Again, the information displayed on this screen is very much dependent on the information provided by the switch in the CDP, LLDP, or EDP frames. Here we see the IP address of the switch. I find this to be a very handy way to get the address in case I need to console into the switch to make changes. Below the switch icon is the link speed and duplex information. In this case, we can see that the switch is advertising it is capable of 10, 100, or gigabit Ethernet. The negotiated speed will be the speed that is bolded, in this case, 1 gigabit. As for the duplex, the switch supports both half and full duplex, and we're connected using full duplex. Just below the speed and duplex is the port description. Again, this varies from switch to switch. For this switch, this field is the description associated with the port. By default, it's the port number. Being that we're connected to a switch that supports PoE, and PoE was enabled in the auto test configuration, the PoE information is displayed for the link. The two voltages shown are the unloaded voltage and the loaded voltage. The loaded voltage is only displayed if true power has been enabled in the auto test profile and a PoE class has been selected. In this case, I selected class 3 PoE, which draws 13 watts of power. The unloaded voltage is the voltage that was measured with no current draw, and the loaded voltage is the voltage measured with a maximum wattage for the PoE class drawn. We can see that we are able to get an acceptable voltage when drawing the full 13 watts. Below is the PoE pair information we are able to see which pairs are used for the positive side of the connection and which are used for the negative. In addition to supporting copper Ethernet connections, the Switch app supports fiber connections as well. Here is an example of where I connected the tester to the same switch, but this time to one of the SFP slots. Instead of speed, duplex, and PoE information, we see the SFP details. The important value in working with fiber is the RX power. This shows the optical signal level received from the device at the other end. In the case of gigabit Ethernet, we are looking for a value stronger than negative 18 decibel milliwatts. In this case, we are much higher than that value, so we would expect the device we connect to this fiber will have no problem linking. When testing fiber connections, it is a good idea to use the SFP that will be used in the device that will be connected to the link whenever possible. This way, you know that not only the fiber connection is good, but the SFP is working as well. The information on this screen may be refreshed by tapping on the refresh icon in the upper right corner of the screen.